Okay, welcome back, and we're looking towards the 2023 election. The whole question of insurgency, which unfortunately bedevils us in Nigeria, certain pockets. Um, what, to what extent would it uh, be able to threaten uh, the 2023 election? We've been looking at it. There are those who, you know, are saying that you know it, it's okay. They they could try, but um, you know uh, there is government, and um, government seems to be very much poised and in place. But then the point has also been made this morning that no matter what government has done, the army, security service, SSS, and all of that, there also is a need for the people to also own uh, the whole process. Uh, the people can't afford to not be concerned. And that's where we're coming to, uh, for example, the whole matter about in the East, uh, where Mondays there's a symbolic day about to sort of demonstrate their control Nobody comes out. Nobody opens their shop. Um, interestingly, as we spoke about this earlier, Ashura Jubala, uh, his program, his uh, you know, campaign program from January next year uh, has been put on, uh, on Mondays because you, you, you can't, as a non-state actor, make any national assignments and expect people to just uh, roll over. But um, do I have another... Oh. Oh, good morning, Bega in uh, Abuja. Uh, apologies for keeping you waiting. Please go ahead now. Yes, good morning, Mr. Yori. Good morning, Dr. Dan. Good morning, sir. Uh, see, I don't see the insurgency of Brandy Tree by experiencing now as a threat to the coming election. What do I mean? See, we can, all that is happening, they are under three categories, criminality, political, and economy. Let me start with political, which is based in the South South, South East, IPOB, whatever, unknown government. Let me tell you, they were, they were saying that there will not be election in Anambra. Election took place because political solution was brought into it. Without way they did it, I wouldn't know that election took place free and fair. They are that it today, nobody could go to court and challenge the results because it was very free and fair. The only thing that was apathy that the election took place. And since Obi took over, I mean, the indicated his interest to contest. We have seen that everything in Southeast have, I mean, mellowed down. There's no much of agitation again because all is about policy. It's about having taking to take care in the sharing of power or being in power or whatever. So I believe that those who want to be to be president and which are majorly the youth of the Southeast will not want anybody to disrupt that election. So I don't see anything stopping election in the Southeast by 2023. Then coming to the area of, 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 of insurgency, which is criminal, we had election in 2014, 2014 when the global government in the northeast were under Boko Haram, 14 in Bono, the seven in Anaba, Adamawa, and two I mean, I mean, in Yobi. Election were held because the people were moved to IDP camp and they held election there. And in 2019 also were able to hold election because they were, they, they were able to incapacitate the local army to some extent that election took place. And now, people are very returning to villages and local government in Adama, you know, those places that the that, I mean, local army are not holding any territory now. So I don't see election not holding in the, in the, in the northeast. They come to the northwest and the, uh, and the uh, north central, which are criminalities and economy. Bambi tree and, 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 and is, is both economical. That, that, that cannot be people and rustling cow because they want to make money from it. And the criminality aspect of it is that these agency are moving down there, trying to create their own base there to attack, which they have not been able to do. And the army, the military in the recent time, have been able to deal with them. So I don't see anything stopping this coming election. Well, I just want our army and military to be more encouraged than police to, to, to do more harm to these people. I mean, there have been a lot of them. Recently, they killed one of the, um, the, uh, of the commanders of the ISWAP in, 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 the, in Bono there, in the Insabisa forest. And they have been killed in the North, in the north Central. So I believe that our military can handle this. And for the Southeast, as I said, it's been taken out because they will not want to give that the chance of Obi to rule this country because that has been their desire that they want to be part of the government. So I don't see any threat to it. Looking at this, this scenario, that election will go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Wenga in Abuja, for calling in. You know, we, uh, and look, you, you've got to hand it to this administration. Um, uh, President Buhari, he wants to um, have an undistorted and undisturbed transition. So I'm sure that 
all of these possibilities would have long been under their microscope uh, as to how to go. Um, I'm just taking that for granted. Uh, if you're in shoes and institution, um, what legacy were we going to leave behind? When um, in 2007, you challenge the attempt um, to transit from one government to another, and then you, you are a victim of, of a flawed uh, of a flawed um, democratic process, of a flawed transition program in, who, in which the beneficiary himself acknowledged publicly that the process that brought him in was, mm. not, was not free and fair. And there's no doubt about that. From the actions, from the body language of the president, you will see that he's interested in bequeathing a near perfect. You, mm. cannot, mm. you can't have a perfect system, a near perfect um, um, transition to to a new administration, a near perfect electoral, electoral, electoral process. There's no denying the fact. But uh, like Egbenga did a comprehensive overview of what we have, there's no doubt there's challenge. We have challenge that we must look into in conducting election in Zamfara State. But we have challenge in Kassina State. Mm -hmm. We have challenge in Kaduna State. We have challenge in some part of Niger State. We have, we have, we have, we have challenge in in Yubi, Bono. And Adamawa, these are critical areas in which there are security agencies, those that are security agencies, from the security angle of the election, we must be looking at to deal with in the north. Indeed. We One have, second, please, okay. while I bring on the, uh, Mr. George. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Larry, and uh, good morning to Dr. Johnson. Good morning, sir. Uh, Uncle Yori, um, the... Insurgency, the aspect of insurgency that Reverend Dominic spoke about is one aspect of uh, insurgency as threat to this coming election. There is another aspect of it that is not yet on, on the debating table. One of the presidential candidates, by the time I talk about the features, you know the one I'm talking about. His followers and supporters are militant in orientation. When another presidential candidate or a candidate of another party is holding a rally, they will go there, infiltrate the place, and be causing trouble, either booing or abusing. When there is a debate, they do the same thing. And if you dare disagree with them in any debate, they, start, they go violent. I see this group of people, they have sensing that there is an inability of their candidate to win the election. They, they, they carry the potential of causing trouble on election day. This is the time, and I have not seen that their candidate cautioning them. I see this as a potential threat that needs to be addressed. If you want to win, you are to convince the electorate about what you've got to offer, not attacking the others who are contesting with you. They don't win elections by attacking. You convince people about your capacity, what you have done, what you are capable of doing, and what you intend to do, and convince them. But these people do not do that. They are not after that. When they are sensing the, the, the emergence of the loss, I see a, a possibility of going violent in order to spoil things so that no other person can have it. That's another aspect of insurgency in this election that we need to address, in addition to these other known formats that we have been talking about. Indeed. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you very much uh, for calling in, Mr. George. And um, there's a sense in which Dr. G.D. Uh, Johnson, at the very, very top of the program, had said, look, in terms of trying to understand what the term insurgency and insurgent means, you could extend it beyond the classical definition. And there's Mr. George there. Uh, speaking about the conduct of um, uh, the, the desired conduct of all contestants, because um, uh, you, your supporters are going to listen to you, or you, you should have a situation. So, if you can't play a crucial role in guiding them as to how to conduct themselves, stay with the issues and nothing else. Uh, thank you, Mr. George, for declining to mention any particular names, but. You know, look, 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 look at the situation. We are now at the home stretch, mm -hmm. and that's coming back home. You know, we spoke about um, that's 
um, the responsibility of the actors and players within the system, right. within the system themselves. Right. Do they eat up the polity? Do they make the polity an atmosphere that encourages debate um, and um, um, not controversy, fear and tension? There's no doubt that um, the political parties, mm. their candidates, um, have critical role to play a very critical in ensuring role. that um, one, there's no state in Nigeria that is being governed without a governor from a particular political party, particularly from two or three of the major political parties that we have. Mm. There's no state. Two, there's no local government that is being governed that is not governed by people that are validly nominated. So the political parties themselves, apart from what the government will do, apart from what the state institution will do, the political parties and their candidates have critical role to play. But you see, unfortunately, for this our present democratic experience, right from 1999 to date, we have weakened the institutions of the party. Okay. The party in Nigeria are just instrument of nomination. Yeah, but, but since people have now selected one or the other, one over the other, um, that one person now, I understand what you're saying, but can't he be separated from the party? But, you know, I don't want to keep uh, Mukhtar. You return to the question, but let me bring Mukhtar uh, in Kano on stream. Good morning to you, Mr. Mukhtar. Good morning, Uncle Yuri. How Good are morning, you? Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, let me contribute to what you are discussing. Okay. You see, why are we always paying attention to electioneering that incited a threat to 20 and 23 general elections? We as a nation should concern for the survival of the nation, for the survival of the people. Why are we too much paying attention to election, election, election? The nation has to survive, whether it's an election or not, whether it's a political party or not. But the, for the people to survive is the most important of any nation in this world. So why are we always attaching insurgents to election? After election, then what comes next? The insurgency should continue? No. The, the fundamental problem is that we should address this issue squarely, irrespective of election or no election. Because why are we always election, election, election? People are dying. People are suffering. People are being kidnapped. Women have been raped. For what reason? They are, they are Nigerians. They must survive. They have the right of freedom, and they have the right to live anywhere in, in Nigeria. But our government, I'm sorry to say, is always telling us something different. Lies. Lies upon lies. Why should that happen? Just recently, children, about 30, 37 of them were now. Little innocent children working in the farm to survive, to support their families. But we don't care. We always talk about election, election. What kind of people are we? <laughs> Nigerian we Okay, Mukhtar. Thank you very much for calling in. Mukhtar called in from uh, Kano. It's a different kind of a point, but I think it's very important yeah, as well. Yeah, it's important. I it's just, very, I, very important. I just came back from Kano yesterday. Why, are, why is it that it's in this election season now that Mukhtar didn't say so? Why is it that in this election season now we're talking about threats to 2023 election. How about threats to our national life, our national see, peace? If Mukhtar had paid attention to various programs on TV, particularly this program, and what the focus of what GD does most of the time on journalists and out, it's about this threat to national security, mm -hmm. to our economic life, and the rest of it. The reason why we are focusing on 2023 election is that there will be a transition. And what will shape Nigeria for the next four years will happen with the election. In, so we are setting the agenda for the incoming government on what they need to do. So if they could take steps to stop insurgency from affecting the election, definitely whatever measures, whatever lessons that is learned from there can be, can be transferred to public administration and ensuring that there's peace and tranquility in Nigeria. Like, I came back from Kano. I was in Kano for one week. I went for, for a national assignment, and I stayed throughout in the hotel. I would have loved to travel to the length and breadth. You know, travel by road, mm -hmm. understood, explore, explore Nigeria, you know, understand mm. Nigeria. So I can understand his feeling. I can understand his plight. I felt the same way too. That I just flew into Kano and I flew back to Kano without actually country, seeing without, Kano, without actually knowing you know? my country. Are you getting my point? You know, I was sharing with a lady from NT that went together that 
You, you recall the book we read in, the, in primary school, Mr. Giwa is a travel. Mr. Giwa is a trader. Mr. Giwa used to travel through the length and breadth of Nigeria as a trader and the rest of it. But we can't have that experience. It's not that we are focusing too much on election, but we are looking at how we can ensure that the next administration that will table all our problems with can address issues that is affecting. There's no doubt that it's affecting, kidnapping is affecting everybody, whether mentally, emotionally. If you want to go from from Lagos to Ibadan now, you think twice. When should I go? How should I go? How should I drive? And then you'll be looking left, exactly. right, and you'll be looking left, right, and center. So it's, 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 once we are able to secure the election, we hope the, the, the template we use in securing the election we can replicate that on daily basis and secure our lives. So that's that's the reason why uh, we are focusing on this mukta. And um, um, it's not that everything is about election, election, election. Yeah. In, in fact, um, uh, you know, you you you're so very right. Yeah. But uh, the, the 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 point uh, mukta wanted to was bringing up, not wanted to was actually bringing up is that so after this election call. Are we then going to let it go back to the stage that alerted us to have a conversation about it because there's no other important, whereas uh, important uh, agenda uh, in, in a national sense? Um, and I suppose without him even mentioning it, he must be going back to the beginning of this administration where just like the incoming administration, whoever is coming in, they've already been set the agenda of security. Without security, we can't do anything. Now, we thought President Buhari, um, you know, because of his professional background, would be one with a different, uh, with a difference. Just like we expected it of uh, Abbas Anjo, it didn't happen. I'm not holding. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not acting as a spokesperson for the president. But there's no doubt that every nation. If you look at it globally, the, 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 the terror alert, the rate of non-state actors playing critical role yes. in, in almost all democratic society has been on the increase in recent times. Now, Around the we, world. We, always, we always face security challenges. We always face issues. However, what we are saying is that government must always be on top of it and government must always be ahead of while we were young as a toddler in lagos we go to school together once we are leaving school those days they call it bomber bomber <laughs> which you call kidnapping so it has always been we've always had the we, uh, you see you have, you have, we have always the criminal had criminal elements in our society there's no way you can crack why do you why do you put security forces in place if there's no need for protection of lives and property then everybody, we shouldn't have police. Okay. We shouldn't have the army. One second, please. Um, uh, Sunday, uh, Mr. Sunday in Akwai Bomb. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Go ahead now, please. All right, sir. Let me drop my contribution by saying sometimes we claim to be more righteous or more, more important. I mean, more, more righteous than other people in Nigeria. Take away the election, take away the government out of the leadership at the moment. This country will be held for each and every one of us to live inside. So number one thing each and every one of us should think is how to bring the better government into a system because through the better government, the security will be protected. They they put everything at all, everything at all depends on the government. Take away the take away the government, even the private sector will not have a level environment to operate. So at this moment, let's how we can come up with the best candidate, a man who has the people in Nigeria have asked. Not what we happened in 2015. They all tried to hold Nigeria, shouted, shouted, and shouted, changed, changed, changed. At the end of it, we changed from the we changed from the grass to the grass. So please, I want to beg the rest of Nigeria this time around. That same mistake we did in 2015, we are about to repeat that same mistake again. Mm. I have listened, I have listened to such an man in so many so many uh, interviews, so many uh, panels. I don't see anything at all you could be able to present to Nigeria. This is what I have in plan to do to Nigeria. Just by giving us sovereign, go to this, you see this, go to this, you see this. You could not be able to sit in a giant dance and tell the people, tell the people of Nigeria, this is what I have in the package. Go back and tell the Nigeria, I live about uh, so and so amount of million into the, into the port. But still achievement, 
to pay gratuity was an achievement. To pay salary was an achievement. This is not an achievement. All right, then. Stand up and tell us. Tell us, stand up and tell us exactly what you did to a particular state where you become a ruler of that particular state. Tell us what you did. Well, okay, we've got to leave it there. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for calling in Sunday uh, in Akwai Bomb. Really appreciate your contribution, uh, as indeed we appreciate the contributions of all the others, um, George in Ikeja, Reverend Dominic, Mukta in Kano, Emmanuel, Otukogbenga in Abuja, all of you speaking on that particular area. And certainly, you know, the lead discussant, uh, Dr. G.D. Johnson, chief lecturer at uh, the Nigeria Institute of Journalism. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for having me. Indeed, our like pleasure. Like we said, don't forget the analogy, a man with 36 wives and one concubine. And one concubine. <laughs>